Hello, hello. So I have just about a minute till I start, but uh, I'll get started now. Good morning, everyone. Uh, hope you had a good Saturday night, some parties and stuff. So just a little bit of background on me. Uh, I'm from Physical Security Village. My name's Lucas. Uh, I'm a grad student at BU, uh, cybersecurity and criminal justice major. So I'm just gonna go over a little bit of what is OSINT. So OSINT is really anything on the internet that you know can be classified as you know usable, right? Uh, as long as you don't have to break into anything or pay for it, because uh, I'm a broke college student, um, you know that is what I consider open source intelligence. Um, so you know don't not hacking into anything, et cetera, et cetera. So where you can apply the information, right? Uh, there's tons of organizations that use open source intelligence. One of them being Trace Labs. This is where I got my start in open source intelligence. What it does is um, they have a crowdsourced game, uh, like a CTF game, where you take information, right, uh, based on missing people. Uh, you try to help find them, but it incentivizes you because you get points based on you know how actionable that intelligence is. Uh, so it's a really good way to innovate on the fly, and uh, it, it makes you feel good afterwards. Uh, also, a shout out to um, Joe Gray from the Ascension. He taught me a lot of what I know. So commonly used resources in um, OSINT are basically social media, right? So everyone here, I assume, is on LinkedIn and has been posting. So, you know, if I were to follow you, you're my target. Um, I could see, you know, information based on, you know, your career, what what you're striving to achieve. You know, everyone posts stuff like that. Um, and then from there, I'll probably get your full name. You could go to Instagram, Facebook, stuff like that. You could find family, friends. And then once you start getting to know this person's life, you're really able to insert yourself into their story and, you know, uh, get more information on them than they probably know is out and available. So um, has anyone here posted a photo of their new badge the first day that they got to work? Okay, well, a lot of people do, and it's a big security risk. Uh, it's a great part of OSINT and shifting to social engineering because that just shows, oh, you know, I'm a new person, uh, you know, I, I got my badge, and now I know what new people with their new badges look like as well. So uh, that's a, a security risk in this. So I'm going to go over some tools that are used uh, a lot in OSINT investigations. First one being Multigo. So Multigo has so many different databases it pulls from. Uh, you can just insert a name, an address, phone number, uh, any sort of identifier, and it will pull from those databases any you know objects listed with that same identifier. So I personally have not accessed all the APIs in Multigo, but it's a great place to find uh, you know new leads that you didn't even know were actually available. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great starting tool. So who is, is uh, you know, it's going to link a little bit next to the uh, tool I show after it. Um, it just turns uh, you know, domain names into server IPs. So that's really useful for you know, when you're trying to you know, do OSINT on a company. Uh, you have their domain name, and then you can get their IPs, and then you shift to Shodan. So Shodan shows you know, technologies and stuff like that for um, what's hosted like on that server IP. So it'll show, you know, uh, if you can see the open ports in the top right, it also shows what is returned by each of those ports. Uh, and then in the bottom, it'll show, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, operating system, et cetera, is running on that machine. Next one up is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's either Wiggle, Weigel. Uh, Wiggle.net is, you know, where all people who do war driving upload their data for, uh, you know, the public to browse. This is super useful essentially for, um, you know, when you're looking at commercial spaces, you can see what Wi-Fi networks are operating in that area, and you can kind of narrow down, you know, what router, et cetera, is there. Um, and the MAC addresses are listed with the router, with the SSID. You can find out which manufacturer, you know, created that router, and you can cross-verify that, you know, if you see a picture of it, let's say in a Google review or something like that, you see a Cisco router, you see an address that, you know, is generated by, you know, a Cisco router as well, then you know that's the router and the network that you're going to have to look at. So a lot of OSINT investigators love frameworks. So this framework here, uh, it has, uh, you see these little blue dots? Each one of those, it's, I know it's really small, uh, represents a different, um, you know, amount of information that you want to get, whether it's, uh, you know, email addresses, usernames, uh, anything from, you know, what languages you see on the screen. You click on that blue dot, and then you have those uh, websites that this person has graciously created uh, to, you know, point you in the direction of that tool that you need. 
Uh, a lot of people use you know, their own frameworks and create their own uh, you know, uh, routines that they go through for each investigation. Uh, but this is a great way to find your own by finding those tools that you gravitate towards a lot. So I'm going to transition to locations a bit. I think everyone knows Google dorking. Uh, so you can use Google dorking for finding uh, you know, uh, floor plans, uh, you know, a rental agreements, stuff like that. Uh, a great thing to know is uh, you know, there's a lot of information that's listed by address. And especially if you're looking to high rises and stuff like that, high rises don't typically change shape from the first floor to the top floor. So it's mainly cookie cutter each way, uh, every way up. This is an example of finding information from an address rather than finding information on an address. So this is master lock here, right? If you put in their, you know, their address there and you put file type PDF, it shows only things that have you know, the address listed in that PDF. So I found one down here named restricted information. So of course, I want to click on it. And when I click on it, I find it is a template for how they fire people, which is really interesting to have on the open internet. Uh, it's good to know. Um, that you know it, it's uh, available. Uh, so if you ever want to scare someone who works at Master Lock, feel free to send it to them. Um, and not to pick on them, but I did find another thing. This is a great social engineering avenue, right? So you have a contract between uh, the state of Wisconsin and Master Lock, right? And at the bottom, you see there's uh, the name and phone number and email of that contact. So what you can do is become a middleman, right? And that's just finding something on the open internet. You don't have to, you know go through that person's email just to find this information. I don't know why it's on, the, on Google, but um, it's, a, it's a great social engineering avenue. So next up, uh, just as I said, uh, commercial properties are great. So very few companies like, own their offices. Uh, so they you know, rent from a you know, high rise, stuff like that. And everyone right now is looking to rent, right? Everyone wants to you know, get someone in their space. So they post you know, those floor plans. They, they post. You know, what other um, you know large companies are there? So you want to go there, you know, um, and they're very uniform in, in the way that they're stacked. So if you get one um, floor plan for a floor, it's typically going to be the same all the way up. So this is the uh, new tool that I found for this year. It's called GeoSpy AI. So it works by you put an image right into the browser. Uh, you can pay for an API. I don't feel like there's a need for it quite yet, um, and you get stuff like this. So if you see on the right side there, uh, it's on my phone, you can see it shows approximate location of where it is. So this photo was actually taken in Shanghai, but it said it was in Hong Kong. So it's approximately 760 miles away, not a great look. However, it does work on different locations. It's really good at getting a baseline of where this image was taken, and then you have to verify, right? So this one, it's a, if you can see on the right, it's a, it is a bit small. It's three kilometers away from the actual target location. So that is a very good baseline for just throwing an image into a, you know, a tool and shooting out you know, this information. Finally, I'm going to go over a uh, applied OSINT vignette. So I'm going to go walk through um, a, a small investigation I did. It uh, involved a uh, massage parlor. It was for um, like a, a bit of a What's the word? Uh, information gathering for a, a local department. So this is just Google image reviews, right? Or Google review images. Uh, you can see on the leftmost side, that is just an image of the hallway. You see there's three doors. Uh, and then on the second image, you can see that there's a monitor there. That monitor is really interesting because every single room has one. So what that has is every camera location, right? So whoever's inside can see what's going on on the outside. Um, and then on the right, you can actually see one of those cameras above that door. So as I said, cameras, right? So if you're doing an OSINT investigation, you always want to see entrances, egresses, and especially those cameras. Because you know, if you're going to you know, do a pen test or something like that, you probably don't want to get caught by those. So on the left here, we have one large camera on the roof. And it's pointing at the you know, first three parking lot spots and further back behind them. Additionally, you have a right, uh, the camera on the right in red. And that's facing the door. So it, it has a, an image of anyone trying to enter that location. And then there's a back door. If you go, it, it's just Google Maps, right? Street View, you drop the pin. Uh, you can look around a building. And there's another camera there uh, based on that back entrance. But it's only facing one way. So if you wanted to enter from the back, you could go you know, from, I think this was uh, the east-facing side. So you go from the west, and then you, no one would know. 
And then, as I said, the four buildings, right? Um, if you want to, you know, confirm, especially for smaller strip malls and houses like that, you can see everyone likes HVAC units now. You know, it's, it's how you cool your house, your building. Um, you can see the, the piping goes to four different, you know, locations. So that approximately, you know, it's like, there's four different rooms that need to be cooled, right? So in this photo here, you can see those, there's three, and then there's another one behind it. So you're not able to see it in this photo. That's great about, you know, cross-referencing with different photos. And then finally, we have a Weigel.net example. So for this, it shows, uh, if anyone's familiar with war driving, right? It shows all the networks down in the bottom on the street. No one turned up into that actual lot, unfortunately. However, you can see all those networks and some of them, you know, with varying levels of security. And it shows the MAC address and the um, SSID. So going back on what I said before, um, it's really useful to know, uh, you know, what manufacturer made that router, um, you know, for exploitation and stuff like that. Um, it, it's a great addition to, uh, you know, investigation and stuff like that. All right. Any questions? That was really quick, so I wasn't expecting that. All right, thank you. Oh, yeah. You want to, yeah. <laughs> I can take questions down here. Mike down here? OK, perfect. Yeah, I can hand this one to him. That's OK. Sure. Well, OK, here we go. All right. Oh, I think that one's on now. <laughs> so once you get beyond the online research, uh, can you talk a bit about the in-person surveillance aspects? So, so the, the question was, you know, the shift from online to in-person. Um, that shifts more to like, you know, uh, uh, you know, tactical surveillance measures. So, you know, you got your camera, you got the black van, you know, um, inserting bugs and stuff like that. I don't have much experience in that field. That's where you'd shift towards that social engineering aspect as well. I can speak a little bit on the social engineering rather than the, you know, um, covert intelligence gathering. So, uh, you know, with those ID badges and with those photos you can specifically like find on LinkedIn, you can throw together a getup that looks pretty legitimate and then you can, you know, have your own free will, whatever building you want to enter. Um, Additionally, like, you know, carrying a lot of sh like stuff, you know, like a whole, you know, two, three boxes of donuts, a ladder, you know, two buckets of paint. Tons of people love to hold doors open for you. And I know everyone gets training on that to not do that, but everyone forgets it when, you know, in the moment. Um, so I'd highly recommend, you know, just picking up a hard hat, picking up a high vis vest and seeing where that gets you. Um, and then from there, once you're in, you're, you gain access to a lot of that information that's not open source. So, you know, you get access to decks, stuff like that. So it's always great to carry, you know, a set of common access keys on you uh, just so, you know, you can open those cabinets and get access to documents that people are like, oh, it's in my office. There's no need to secure it any more than putting it in my desk. Um, but, uh, yeah, does that uh, answer your question? All good. Um, maybe this is a silly question, but um, you talked about uh, working for a local authority. Um, like, how do they approach you? Is this part of your job, part of your studies, um, or do you do any uh, investigations like of your own initiative? So the, the question was, uh, you know, I, how I referenced that, um, you know, I worked with a local department for a, a, that. Um, the OSINT vignette that I showed. So I work for another volunteer organization um, in, in open source intelligence, you know, and I just give them the information. I'm not involved in, uh, you know, it's very compartmentalized. So I don't know what they do with that information. I just find it 
and then you know make a you know intelligence report kind of thing. Um, they they did a lot of good work around the the Super Bowl. Uh, every Super Bowl they do um, you know OSINT investigations based on human trafficking, um, and that is you know it's it shifts from that missing persons cases to human trafficking. It's kind of similar, but it's a little bit more uh, you know it's it's harder um, for sure, but. It, it does have that same sort of satisfaction that I'm, you know, being helpful. Yeah. All right. I think that's a wrap. All right. Thank you so much for coming out.